Studio Ghibli, one of the most well-known and famous animation companies in the entire world. They are known for making one of the most revolutionary animated works ever. So well done and so well made that it makes even animators over here blush, like John Lasseter from Pixar, who is the biggest fanboy of Studio Ghibli that has like a lot of power that I can find. But what if Studio Ghibli, who are known for making these long epics, decides to make something different? This is what happened when Studio Ghibli made My Neighbors the Yamadas. My Neighbors the Yamadas was a movie that was directed and written by Isao Takahata, his first movie in five years after he directed Pompoko. It was released on July 17th, 1999. The dub was released in 2005 alongside Pompoko, and G Kids released it on Blu ray for the first time back in January of 2018. It is 1 hour and 44 minutes long, or 104 minutes long. The film was based off of a four coma manga that came out of the same name by Hisashi Ishii that had 20 volumes from 1991 to March of 1997 that followed the Yamada family. Parents Akashi and Matsuko, the Mas Matsuko's mother Shige, the grandmother, 13-year-old uh, Noboru who is the son, and the five-year-old Nanako who is the daughter, uh, as well as the family dog Pochi. As the series went on, more readers decided to grow fond of the five-year-old daughter uh, Nanako, that not only were there more four-panel strips of her that completely follow her, to make it to where she's the main character. They also changed the title of the manga entirely from just My Neighbors the Yamadas to just Nono-chan. The last time that a Nono-chan manga was released was in 2007 and it was announced back in 2009 that Ishii was putting the series on hold to due to an illness and that was the last announcement that we ever had about this manga series. So it's been a while since we had another volume or since Ishii made another volume of this, but that didn't mean that there wasn't enough material that was adapted, and no, it wasn't actually just the movie. About a couple of years after the movie came out, actually, Toei Animation adapted the Nonochan part in the series starting in 2001 and lasted for 61 episodes, and while I can't find any written proof at the moment of anyone who's like watched it entirely and has reviewed it, uh, it's safe to say that you know when you ask someone about Nonochan or My Neighbors the Yamada's franchise, this Toei series isn't the first thing that would come to mind. And no, I didn't watch the 61 episode series. I got a bunch of other fucking shows to watch. And just like what I've said over the past two Ghibli reviews, Whisper of the Heart and Princess Mononoke, yeah, I am singling those two out because this was a first for Studio Ghibli for a couple of reasons. Just like with Mononoke and Whisper of the Heart, yeah, the, this is the first. The main reason was that uh, the entire thing, the entire movie, was made using computer graphics. Not just one scene, just like in Whisper of the Heart. Not just five minutes, just like Princess Mononoke, but the entire thing. Uh, apparently, because of how the Four Coma manga was drawn, the director, Isao Takahata, wanted to have a watercolor effect throughout the film, and that required to have the entire thing be, like, digital. And it ended up being the first 100% digital movie that was created by Studio Ghibli. Because this film is based off of a four coma manga, you expect this to be a film of shorts that introduce us to the characters, what they do, how they interact with each other and other people, and the mischief that they come across in every single story. But when it came to Studio G Ghibli, most notably Takahata, you knew that there would be more into the film than that, especially with a director like Takahata who is known for making his stories grounded, but also very impactful to whoever is watching it. Along with these stories, ranging from Nono accidentally being left at the mall by her family, to the dad, who is played by Jim Belushi in the Disney dub, which I absolutely love, uh, confronting a motorcycle gang in the middle of the night, there is also metaphorical shorts like when dad turns into a superhero to chase off some delinquent kids, or the family is navigating a ship through the quote-unquote sea of life, which talks about the various perspectives of being in a family. If that's not a metaphor that anyone should relate with, I don't think this movie's done its job. No, this movie did a really good job with its scenes like this. It doesn't matter how many members of your family live with you. There will be moments in this movie that you will find either relatable 
and or funny. Doesn't matter if you live with one parent or two parents, a sibling who talks like they're smart, a teenager who wants cooler parents because, believe me, we all thought that at one point, or a grandmother that makes snarky comments and doesn't care who she offends at all. Uh, you'll, you'll see yourself finding these things funny because these were moments that you had before or the characters in the movie represent people in your family that you've had fond memories of and all these situations are average everyday things that we normally don't find humorous because believe me we all want that snarky grandma who just says whatever she wants doesn't give a care in the world and doesn't care who she offends at all because that's the absolute funniest but when we're watching it from a different viewpoint instead of being in the middle of all that crazy stuff but just being a viewer of it watching it in a movie like this we realize that these things are just so ridiculous yet true that we have no choice but to laugh at it because we know these situations all too well as a family. While this movie did really well with critics, the movie didn't do well with the fans and also in theaters, as well as being the first Studio Ghibli film to actually lose money in the box office, and I think I know why. The reason why it lost money and the reason why the fans don't like it, it's not because it fared off from almost every other Studio Ghibli film that went before or after it. The reason why it didn't do so well wasn't because it was trying to be different from any other Studio Ghibli film, it's because My Neighbor the Yamadas, regardless of how different it was, was still a Studio Ghibli film. It was being bashed because no matter how different it was, it will always be on the same pedestal to people as My Neighbor Totoro, and Princess Mononoke, and Grave of the Fireflies, which is arguably Takahata's most well-known film. There's no denying that this film had some qualities in it that Many of you might and will enjoy, and there's nothing wrong with that. The reason why this movie isn't even on people's top Ghibli films list is the fact that it was made by Ghibli. If My Neighbors the Yamadas was made as a standalone film by any other studios, other like, you know, Madhouse, um, Production IG, and Gainax, who literally just a couple of years before this movie came out made easily one of the greatest films I've ever seen, Madhouse making Perfect Blue, and IG and Gainax teaming up to make Evangelion Death and Rebirth and an End of Evangelion. My belief is that if they had time after that to make an adaptation of this movie, or anybody other than Ghibli basically, it doesn't have to be either Madhouse, Gainax, or IG, more people would appreciate the quirkiness that this movie has, but because it was made by Studio Ghibli, who are known for making these revolutionary epics, before and after this, they make Spirited Away, that was their next film after this. One can't help but compare this film to the big boys that were made before and after this film. The films before, Princess Mononoke, My Neighbor Totoro, the ones after this, Spirited Away, and Howl's Moving Castle. Another thing that strikes me as interesting that I actually haven't seen that much on the internet about is that not only what was used during the production, but also what was going on for the most part. Again, I have not seen anything about, uh, about this on the internet at all, I tried looking it up, there should be some connection. I feel like there's some connection, uh, and it's because of this. Like I said in my Princess Mononoke review, after Hayao Miyazaki finished the movie, he went into retirement for almost a year, where he didn't even show up to Studio Ghibli, but instead made his own studio nearby to go to during retirement. This meant that the big three of Hayao Miyazaki, Isao Takahata, and Toshio Suzuki, who produced literally like almost all the movies at this point, were now down to two for the moment in Takahata and Suzuki. Suzuki produced this movie, I forgot to mention that. Uh, so a lot of change was going around the studio, which is what of what might have proposed Takahata to go for the route of full-on computer animation. Uh, instead of going old school, just like how Miyazaki would have done it, and when he came back, still does. And when Miyazaki came back in early 1999 from retirement to take the head role of Studio Ghibli, the decision was already made to go full-on computer animation, so Miyazaki didn't have any control of this. But with that in mind, I'm going to try the best that I can to talk about My Neighbors the Yamadas as a movie, not just a Ghibli movie. Because apparently, if I see it as a Ghibli film, by default I already hate this movie. And that's not true at all. There are some good qualities to it. The art in this movie, as minimalist as it is, was really good. With the amount of computer graphics it had, Ghibli made it to where it looked 
The best way I can describe it is a Calvin and Hobbes-esque as it came straight out of a sketchbook. And while there were some obvious indicators that this movie was CG, that it was made on a computer, it didn't do that much to still impress me. The comedy in this movie is also very effective and reminds me a lot of Takahata's last film, Pom Poco, where it had a witty sense of humor blended in with a touch of fantasy and a grounded message. In this case, it's to always cherish your family no matter how dysfunctional they are. My Neighbor the Yamadas is the perfect Studio Ghibli film, but it also isn't. It isn't because instead of a complicated story where there's well-developed characters and an intriguing story, Studio Ghibli it basically made a slice of life movie, and for anyone who likes watching long epics and films that have a continuing story, this film may not be for you. It's also the perfect Ghibli film because, just like those long epics with continuing stories, in the age of Blu-ray and G-Kids getting the rights to a lot of films, including basically almost every Ghibli film at this point, and releasing them on Blu-ray, so where people over here in the West get easy access to watch it, this is, a, this is a film that you can watch with your family and get some enjoyment about it. No, this is actually the perfect Ghibli film to watch with your family uh, and enjoy it, because what better movie to show a possibly dysfunctional family than to show them a movie about, you guessed it, a dysfunctional family. Take it what you will. Uh, if you think this movie's bad, that's fine. If you think this movie's great, that's also fine. But to me, I'm a little in between on it. Although Ghibli did suffer a little bit financially, uh, this film did serve its purpose 100%. Uh, they would get that money back on their next film, Spirited Away. But uh, at the end of the day, to me, this film was just a case of a really great film that felt like it should have gone to someone else if it wanted the credit it deserved. I'm going to give My Neighbors the album as an 8 out of 10. Thank you guys for watching this video. I know that since I made the Diary of Anne Frank review that I've been getting a lot of attention about some job I got, but, you know, I just wanted to stay grounded with, with this channel. I, I, my goal was to keep writing scripts during road games and to keep making videos, and my goal is to keep doing that. And uh, hopefully I can start a trend here with this. Uh, I can tell you for a fact that in... Uh, when September rolls around, right around mid-September, uh, these videos are going to keep coming back more and more, but for the stretch of time between now and September, uh, we're just going to try and make videos from whatever free time I have, because I'm having a very fun time uh, where I am with this new job. So, uh, for people who, who don't know, I got a job broadcasting for a minor league baseball team. For people who do know, uh, they are very excited that I have this job. And for people who have not seen my social media, yeah, I did get a lot of buzz so far, and I'm still getting some buzz from this job. I have people messaging me that want me on their podcasts and interviews still. So, you know, I'm having a lot of fun doing this. Uh, I'm going to try to keep making these videos. I, I'm still very excited to make these. Uh, regardless of how famous I am, I still want to make these. Uh, these are still very fun to make, uh, just like this one. So, you know, I hope you guys enjoyed. If you liked this video, hit the like button. If you want to see more videos like this in the near future, hit the subscribe button down below. Uh, if you want to see any videos that I've made in the past back when I was in my actual house, uh, there are videos on the screen, down the channel, and down in the description. Uh, and with that, from, uh, from a new temporary dorm, my name is Payne, and I'll see you in the next video.